Hello everyone, I'm Manik, and it's mo it's been honored to be here again, and because like uh, it's my maybe my second or third time to have a talk here in RubyConf. Um, here is uh, here is this topic of target audience of today is like the first. Uh, I think everyone here may have familiar with the unit test already, and also have some experience of integrational tests and also who thinks that the documentation in your Rails application is, is not helping to understanding your projects. I think most of the people here will have the same experience as me, so that's why I want to introduce this talk today. Uh, at first, I have to introduce a little about myself. I currently work in RSB, and also I have my own consultancy company called Hoziru. Uh, is so I will have a lot of projects, different projects experience. So that's why I think um, my experience can help everybody here. And four years ago, I have the talk talk about a refactor with test. That's 2014. And at the time, I thought there were people is not very familiar with tests and don't realize how important refactoring can help your projects. And now we are in 2018. In my experience, most real projects in Taiwan, especially in Taiwan, have al already automated the test. And refactoring is not a new world anymore. But I found another problem that ex existed for a long time, and it got my attention. So that's, that the problem is you, your spec issue. So what is the spec issue? The spec is means that what your projects will go. It's like you have a new project or maybe your existing projects that you will have a lot of user stories, right? And also that will become your uh, documentation about your specs. You have to do this, do this, do this. And most of the specs are distributed in all the issue trackings. Like each one of ticket has some of the specs of your projects, right? and maybe you will try to organize them into your wiki system. And from the time goes on that we will realize that you cannot really understand the projects, even there are already wiki system because it's uh, distributed and maybe outdated and maybe it's not organized very well. So I want to introduce like two typical kinds of the specs problem in each of the projects. The first is that the different sources of specs. So as I mentioned before that developers will like to write down the specs in the wiki system, maybe GitHub wiki, maybe Jira wiki. But on the other hand, your project managers or your issue owners, they are not developers. They will usually use their own tools to write down the specs. So perhaps he will use the Word on Google Drive, maybe. So everyone will has its own favorite tools. So one of my experience of a project is that um, where is our documentation of this project? So I got three sources from that. And it makes me feel, uh, what, what should I do now? What should I follow first? And most importantly, they are duplicated. So maybe there is a one feature, but I can find three pieces of the documentation about describing how we do that and how we did that. So I have to study more to determine that maybe this is outdated and this is still working on, or maybe they are all outdated. So that's the very frustrating things that when I encounter to a new project. I think that maybe a lot of people here will got some Thank you. Oh, I see. Thank you. <laughs> and also, people live and join a team. It's very common, right? So um, maybe one, one project manager will have his own documentations on his own, but he didn't deliver to the new one. So at the time, when the time goes, nobody will know how the detail of the project is. And so that's the, basically the two types of the specs problem in most of the projects that I saw. So, okay, 
when we talk about want to bring out the live documentation, the first of all is called BDD, right? And then you can see these pictures. I think most of people know what this means. It means cucumber. And nope, we are not talking about cucumber today. Definitely not. Uh, well, I have to say first, I used cucumber before, and I also use another gene called turnip. It's a gherkin style to write down your aspects. I, I tried it for a long time, and I finally decided to drop out it. Because there are, there are reasons because that. The first is that cucumber means that developers need to maintain another test framework. Uh, that means you already have, to, basically you will have your own test unit. Um, to write, maybe mini test, maybe aspect. You a lot of unit test, model test, um, controller test. You already write on that, and you have to learn another way to describe your uh, projects again. That doesn't mean you write it write it down again. That means you have to write it in a different way, different DSL. So it costs you the, like uh, double ties to write on that. And the second one, I think that's the most uh, important problem of the Cucumber is that I didn't know any PM will, would like to adapt this. They all feel like, oh, okay, it seems well, it seems very clear, I will try. And they won't never try because they, will ha they, they have another important priority. The f uh, the first part of the PN is that he need to figure out what the, what the specs are and to write it down. That's the first priority. And the second one is to make sure it's on schedule. And so if you want to push them to use a different way they are not really familiar with and maybe they have to study a lot to adopt this, they eventually will have very big pressure. And the most, and the, there is a third way, a third issue that is that uh, lots of developers will try to use Cucumber and to write down feature tests, but and they are like uh, just another unit test, and they are not, they are too technical and very hard to be adapted in the real life. So here is an example. This is a very very common Cucumber example that in the web you can find out. So that is very clear, right? I just want to log in. So you go, to, you go to the login page, write down an email, write down a password, write down login. And let's see what is the real life specs that PM will really write. He will really only write one sentence, like user is able to log in with email and password, and that's done. Basically, that's the truth, right? And the, the further two lines, like uh, another specs about the, the features. Basically, they will only write down like this. So if we, we, that means if we try to make them to use the cucumber way, that means a lot of more words they have to write. So that means more work. So eventually, that the PM will maybe fade out about the writing down the cucumber style, and you still fail. So let's go to the straight topic. Oh, maybe I'm too fast to <laughs> speak about that. Uh, the real one, if you want to introduce the uh, acceptance test in your application, that I think there are three steps that you need to follow. This is my proposal today that I want to introduce everyone. The first one is that Keyman is your project manager and you are you, or your issue owner. That means who write down the specs, then we follow the, the style that the, the project manager does. And the second one is that we must make sure that all specs should be in your acceptance test, no matter what, what they write. And the third one is that we generate the documentation back to the PN. So basically it's like a little like BDD, but not really, really like the BDD that we usually think about. So, um, Let's talk about the first one. That's the really important, the most important thing that I think is this one. The key man is your project manager and your issue owner. As it, that means developers, uh, we are developers and we are only supporters. 
the style, the style that write down the tickets is uh, PN can decide this. We just follow, try to follow that. We can make him better, make them better, like more precisely, uh, provide more examples, make the, make the sentence more executable, but written in PN style. So, so you have to forget the thing about the best practice, especially anything that you can find out in the website, like best aspect written style. Please just give it a little try to do something like this. Uh, this is uh, one of my projects, and that's not all of that. This is just one part of my specs, and that's the real. I just translate into English. The original one is Chinese. So this acceptance is quite very simple. Like uh, the first is able to trial calculation without with or without login. It's not very clear, but that's that's how the how my PN write down. And basically, developers already know about how what it is. So the second one is that I just write down it all in aspect. Um, this, this is pretty. Tip. The presentation is very is open, so you can you can see this de detail in the web. So we don't have to start study here. So I just want to show you that I just directly write down all the tests, follow my PN style, and then I try to generate the document back in Markdown style. And so I put it into my. Uh, GitHub repository, so it's in uh, source control. And I use a, just a little tool that makes sure I can generate Markdown uh, document from uh, with Aspect. So it's very fast because I want to introduce is that, well, what I want to say is this, you have to break some rules if you want to follow this style. So the first one is that unit tests can also be acceptance tests. We, when we talk about the integrational tests or maybe acceptance tests, we always talk about like request tests, integrational tests. You have to really set up your, your website and then really generate that. But nowadays, it's really, really hard to really follow this, especially when right now, right now as a Rails developer, I usually have a lot of application just about Rails API. I, I only generate API because front end use the Node.js or I directly generate API and the front end is iOS. So I will never have opportunity to really test the, uh, the real world features. That's a problem. So, so maybe I sometimes I have to just write down all the simple tests to make sure the business logic is is ready. So that is first one. And the second one is that sometimes it will, it will make you a lot of time to write down the integration of the test. That's another big issue that in the test war. So I will, I will encourage my developers to use pending tests. So things like that, you can see that's, uh, okay, wow, that, that's a little small. I hope you can see that. Uh, this is another fake. It's a fake issue. Spec is right on like the first. The first line is just the issue title. It's just a title. So I've just followed that and write down the write down the issue. And I provide the example is like um, this. This example may be very hard. You are not really really understand how to write a test, but you should, you still need to write it down. So you can use pending or you just give it a true. It's okay, I can, I can tell you more about that. And the second one is that you can see that the third line there is a pending about, the description is just about the image file. Yeah, I, I don't know how to test the image file, so I just leave, leave it empty here. So that means we are using aspect or the test units. The basic, the description, it doesn't has any rules. So we want to generate it a good document for our application. We should not be strictly the, about the rules that 
uh, write down the best aspect expression. That will uh, that will make you feel that you are only write down the technical test. But we want to use the benefit about the aspect power. So I figure out this kind of way. And here is some other tips who can really talk about like this. Uh, sometimes we will have Rails application with only JSON API. That's what I mentioned before. And your front end is an iOS application. So I, I can do that is that if the iOS application has their own unit test, they can generate their format of the test result. Like I mentioned above, it's a JSON report using another tools to generate. Uh, this is for front end, but I think it's just for example, so you can use that. So that means if you want to put your documentation all in one place, you can use this kind of way. It's like uh, you test the result of the iOS test. If it's true, that means the feature is okay. Why I mentioned this is because that uh, we, I want to put all the specs, all the documentation in one place to make sure we won't duplicate the, duplicate the, the specs all, all around. And also that uh, it can help you to just, you don't have to write down very hard detail integration of tests and help you save you time. Of course, if you want to write down the detailed uh, integration of tests, it's still okay to do that. But you can still follow this kind of work because it works. It works really well. So that's that's my goal. The spec is also document. The spec is also a separate test, and the spec is also the issue. And I spent like more than two years about to writing down a very good spec uh, acceptance uh, acceptance test and to generate a good document for my application. So I try a lot of tools and try to dig a lot of ways to write down different kinds of specs. And but in the end, I just write down the all the original aspect. So it's kind of really, I don't know, maybe I waste a lot of time. <laughs> but I don't want to, but, but still it's my, mm, well, it's my older experience about the two years trying to make sure our application is, is a good, can generate a good documentation and it's live document and it can be run as a test. And also I really have a documentation that proposed to my customer. So, well, it works. So I think it could help you, uh, everybody here. Yes, so let's go back to the, this is just the very three simple steps. <laughs> the key man is you still your project manager, your issue owner. And the second is that um, you should write down your spec in issue and also it should de be generated directly to acceptance tests. And the third one is that uh, you should generate the back documentation by your tests. So that can make sure your test is documentation and also is live. You won't change your documentation because you might break out your tests. And also it's in source control, so it must be the latest one of your project's specs. So that's the proposal today. I want to introduce everyone that how you can introduce your acceptance tests in your application. Yeah. Oh, I spend only, <laughs> so I only spend the, like 20 minutes. So I, I think I have time to do some QA. So if you have questions, please ask me. Thank you. So anyone, if you have question, raise your hand. So in the end, all of your acceptance tests were written using RSpec? Uh, I will try that in test units or mini tests because the description 
Uh, I think it's that if you try to use like tools like Turnip, like Gherkin Style, you eventually trick your style. You have to follow the style of the writing your documentation. Maybe the test is still work very beautiful, but eventually that you will, you have you will lack ability to write down any style of your docu documentation. Especially that one of my one of my example is that I want to put some pictures. How how do you do that? Sometimes you just need to do something like that, or maybe just some description about maybe like comments. You will have a dis discussion about that. So I think it's that to keep your original ability. That is the most flexible way to do your job. Uh, yes, so I I didn't mention very clearly is in here, right? Uh, this is one, this is just one line comment. I generated the output of the markdown. And then I put it into my repository and git commit. And then you can directly read it on the GitHub. Uh, the green line is about the success, and the, the yellow line is about the pending. Just, just, bec just a little mention. So, I can really deliver this documentation to my customer. They want to see that, and it's in source control. Yeah. Is any question? Oh, you mean outdated specs? Um, outdated spec. You you mean how to solve that? How to solve that? Okay, so uh, we can mention it like with this example. This is the the first line is called issue because I want to show that if if you try to introduce a a certain test in your real world application, basically they have run a li a long time, right? So you don't know how to start with this, the first because you may, you may have to write down a lot of things. So the easiest way is just introduce with one ticket, the real world ticket. So uh, it's like issue. You, you have issue in Jira, maybe issue in GitHub, and just write down all the uh, acceptance tests with the issue into your acceptance test, and then try to write it down. So how to and how to solve your uh, outdated problem. That means you have to figure out which is the latest version, right? And maybe that will relate this to some issue, the old issue. Maybe you can start with that and to write it down with the latest specs again and put it into your source control. And then you, because you will be, you will become a very big job because you have to clean up. At the end, you have to clean out all the outdated uh, specs to say that oh, you have to point to the first, the, the, the latest one. So you have to slowly clean down every updated uh, specs. It's a very big job, I know, but yeah, also in on speed too. Yeah, so, but we still have to s the, do the first step. We still have 15 minutes. Nope. Oh, yes? Uh, how often would your clients request to see the spec that you Well, my, my most impressive experience is that our client is not trust us. They don't trust us. They want to see how we do the work. They want to see, and also there is there is a very good example of that is that my client really forgot what he think in the first place. He think I want to do the in this way, but we already write down the specs on our uh, contract, 
and we show him the contract, he still say, no, I don't think it's in, in my head, I don't think this is the real specs about that. And then we just pick up all the tests to generate it down the, the format to that. And see, um, we, all, we all do it in this way. So in the paper, it's just right now at the first place, is the, this kind of spec is really like this. So if you really change the mind, we can change the specs, but we didn't do it wrong. So some, uh, as a consultancy company, you have, to, you have to handle a lot of different kind of clients. So I think this is a good way to show you a professional because I can, I can really generate a good style documentation about all the specs you want at the first, part, uh, first place. So that you can, um, also that if you encounter something like, what is this, spec, this feature done in the first place? And maybe your team, is a very, uh, your team has run a long time, maybe two years, three years, all the original developers, graduated from the original team, they left the team, nobody knows why this exists. So that means, that means this, this situation comes to a lot of places. So, so I think that you, if you start to do this, and it's, it's very simple, right? I think I, I, try, I try to do that very simple way. So I think if we can start with this, everybody can be happier. Trying to bigger. Uh, how how can I do that? How can I do that? Do you know how to uh, find that in Moon? No. From. <laughs> uh, no. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Maybe you can check it out later. Yeah, it's already online. Uh, it's, a, it's in slides.com and Melika John. You can just directly see all the documentation, all, all the presentation here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, does anyone else? Okay, so now it's time to wrap it up. Yeah. And let's say thanks again to Manic. Thank you. Bye.